Okay, hello everybody, and thank you very much for your interest in A-level philosophy and ethics. I hope I get to meet you all very soon. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mr. Adams. I'm the head of philosophy and ethics here at Hitchin Girls School. And if you come here to study, I will be one of the two teachers teaching you philosophy and ethics over the next two years for A-level. Uh, the other one will be Miss Plunkett, who you'll get to meet in September if you haven't met her already for GCSE. Uh, today, I just want to take you through a few things for the transition process for philosophy and ethics. Not going to go into too much detail about classes and timetables and that sort of thing. I'm going to focus mostly on the bridging project. So let's take a look at that. All right then, uh, philosophy and ethics year 11 into year 12 transition. What do you have to know and what do you have to be aware of at this point? So there's lots of information probably coming your way over the next few days. And the question you're probably thinking is how much of this do I have to keep track of and what should I be worrying about at the moment? The good news is there's very little preparation necessary to start the A-level philosophy and ethics course. Other than the bridging project, you don't have that much to worry about this summer. I'll run over all the information about, you know, what exams in this subject look like, how much homework you're going to get, what lessons will look like, uh, how we're splitting the course between me and Ms. Plunkett. Um, I'm going to do that later. I'll go through that in the taster session and, and again at the beginning of the course in September, rather than going through it in detail here. But if you can't wait for that, if you'd really like to dig into all those sort of details, then there is an introductory letter I'll go through with you in a moment that does contain some of these things if you'd like to read it for yourself. Basically, the only thing I need you to actually worry about, write on a to-do list, etc., before September, apart from the bridging project, is to get hold of a big old lever arch folder and a set of dividers at some point between now and the summer, and bring it along to our first lesson in September when we start the A-level. All I want to do today, really, is talk you through the instructions for the transition project and the associated materials for philosophy and ethics. So if you go to the Google area for the Philosophy and Ethics Transition Project, you will find three things. You'll find, first of all, a letter to new students. You'll find some optional materials. And perhaps most importantly, you will find the Philosophy and Ethics Transition Project. So let me take you through each one of those in turn. Okay, so the first thing on that list is a, a letter to new A-level students that I wrote a few years ago. This is providing you with all the sort of answers to the commonly asked questions at the beginning of Year 12 Philosophy and Ethics. Uh, this is by no means compulsory. This one is really just if you are interested in answers to those questions. Um, it's quite long, but it falls into four main uh, sections. The first is all about the specification and the assessment. So if you'd like to know what exams look like, if you'd like to know how much homework there's going to be, mocks, what the technical details of the specification is, you can find all that here. The second, the philosophy of A-level philosophy, is my big picture view on what the A-level course actually is and what it is that we're studying when we study philosophy at A-level. Uh, the third thing on there is a rough calendar for the year, so taking you through which modules we're going to study at which point in the year and what's included in each of them, in case you'd like to know the timetable for our first year. And finally, I've included a section on some study habits. So if you want to know uh, how to be successful at A-level, then this is probably a place for you to go. You know, things like straightforward stuff, taking good notes, staying well organized, doing some work outside of lessons, keeping an open mind to new ideas and new arguments, that sort of thing. And of course, asking if there's anything you don't understand. So if you're super curious about the course, there's lots of things that you would like to ask and know about. Very probably, if you read through the letter, then the answers are there. But as I say, this, is, this one is not compulsory. The second thing, also not compulsory, uh, is this optional extras materials document. So um, it's possible that at some point over the summer, you might find yourself bored and looking for something to amuse yourself. Um, this optional extra materials document essentially contains some philosophy and ethics themed things that you could interest yourselves in. Uh, first of all, there's a list of books. These are not hard to find secondhand on Amazon. And actually, I think libraries, local libraries, would probably have some of these. Um, there's a couple of general introductions to some questions in philosophy, and there's a slightly oddball choice here, The Philosopher and the Wolf by Mark Rowlands. Um, a philosophy professor gets a pet wolf and does some interesting philosophy about it. Um, these two, uh, political philosophy and justice, are more sort of political philosophy 
um, if you're interested in what philosophy has to say about how to structure and govern society. Uh, so is Capitalist Realism by Mark Fisher. That's from a very sort of left-wing political perspective, if that's your thing. And these two by Mary Warnock are also really good. Um, the Uses of Philosophy and Intelligent Person's Guide to Ethics give you a big picture introduction to philosophy and ethics in turn. There's also a few podcasts, uh, a few movies and TV shows. You can find most of these on Netflix or around about, and a few YouTube channels if they are uh, philosophy relevant YouTube channels, if you might find those interesting and want some videos to watch. So both one and two, the letter to new students and the optional materials are, as the name suggests, optional. But the third thing on our list, the philosophy and ethics transition project, is compulsory. This one has to be completed over the summer. So the Philosophy and Ethics Transition Project, what we try to do with it is to give you an introduction to some of the content that we're going to be studying in our first year. So if you do this well, and you really put some time into understanding it, this is some of the content that we're going to be studying in year 12 philosophy and ethics. So it will put you ahead of the curve and it will give you a, a head start on understanding the content. Uh, the transition project as the course itself is split into three main parts, philosophy, ethics and Christianity. The philosophy one has three tasks. So first of all, there is a uh, series of key terms for you to look up. This is relevant to our first topic on the concept of God. Just having a Google around for these should be fine. These are quite common key terms, so you'll all find relevant definitions for them pretty easily. In the second task, we have a look at whether God exists. And one of the topics we do early in the course is on arguments for the existence of God, where we study philosophical proofs for the existence of a deity of some kind. For the cosmological argument, the teleological argument, and the ontological argument, you'll find an introductory clip and the same three questions about each of them. So who is the thinker behind this theory and what is their argument? Are there any objections to their argument? And do you find their argument convincing and why? So all these three arguments are philosophical arguments to the existence of God. What is the argument? Are there any problems with it? And do you think the argument is convincing? Task number three is about the problem of evil. The problem of evil is a major argument against the existence of God based on the evil and suffering that exists in the world. So again, you've got a clip and some articles to read. And then what is the problem or the two versions of the problem, the logical and the evidential? What is a theodicy with an example and the same questions? Um, does this pose a, a real problem for the existence of God? So, you know, we're not necessarily looking for essay length answers to each of these questions. That would be absurd. A few sentences or a paragraph for each of these questions will be plenty explaining your view or the argument as is required. Section two, then, is on ethics. Ethics, the study of right and wrong. What we're going to do in the ethics course is we're going to look at a range of ethical theories and apply these theories to ethical dilemmas. So the first thing you need to do is to find a uh, ethical dilemma somewhere in the news. So that is a, a, an issue from the news that poses interesting or difficult questions about what is right or wrong, morally speaking, for us to do or think in this case. Your task is to include a summary of the ethical dilemma and then decide what you think would be ethically right in each situation. There's three theories here, natural law, situation ethics, and virtue ethics that are going to give you a, a start in thinking about those ethical dilemmas and whether you think uh, a particular action is right or wrong. The third part is the Christianity part. Um, there is, a, again, a website which is the basics on Christianity and a few questions to go through. These are shorter definitional questions. These are probably a couple of sentence answer, answers rather than paragraphs for each. If you get stuck at any point, then my email is at the front here, benjamin.adams at hgs.hertz.sch.uk. Please feel free to drop me an email. And the easiest way to submit this is online via the Google Classroom. But if there's some forever reason you can't do that, I'm more than happy to take submissions in other formats if you drop me an email and let me know. As I say, hopefully you'll find this interesting enough. There's probably somewhere between three and five hours work in all three, uh, 
in total across part one, part two, and part three. So it's not loads for the entire summer. But if you do give it a, a decent go, it will put you in a very good place to start the content and the course with confidence. And um, that's everything from me. Thank you very much for listening and again for your interest. I hope to meet you all very soon.